Y'all, what's good, son? This week on Thug Notes, we separating wheat from chaff with The Crucible by Arthur Miller. Things ain't right up in 1692, Massachusetts, where Reverend Paris's baby girl Betty and Ben Straight clocked out. See, last night Paris peeped Betty freaking all pagan-like with her cousin Abigail and slave Tatuba. And now word on the street is witchcraft be involved. And the uptight peeps of Salem ain't having none of that. When the play's hero John Proctor rolls in to see what's what, Abigail gets all up on his baby maker like ugly on your mama. Apparently, Abigail used to be Proctor's maid, but got her ass tossed out when Proctor's wife Elizabeth found her shining more than Proctor's shoes. Mm, straight scandalous. Even though Proctor been dogging Abigail since then, she still think that if Elizabeth was out of the picture, she'd be his new wifey. Later, word come that homies getting accused of witchcraft left and right. Turns out Abigail playing dirty and say Elizabeth been sipping that witch's juice. So the fuzz get all up in Proctor's grill and throw her ass behind bars. So Proctor busts in the court to free his boo. But all that real talk backfires and get his ass thrown in the big house. And the only way out is by lying and admitting that he part of the devil's posse. Proctor keeps it OG and don't play that game until he gets a visit from his honey dip Elizabeth. And eventually, he decides to fess up at something he ain't even do. When the law starts saying they're gonna need a written confession so they can show all the hood, Proctor says, hell no, nah, cause he ain't gonna let them use his name on the street like that. So he tears that shit up, struts up to the gallows, and goes out like a gangster. Not only is this play flowing about events that really took place back in the day, but Miller also pimping some parable up in here. See, Miller wanted to give a big f you to 1950s McCarthyism, a time when a whole bunch of Americans started pointing fingers at their own peeps in the name of trying to sniff out any commies. And in Miller's mind, those snitch Americans only know guilty and non-guilty. Like he say, ours is a divided empire in which certain ideas and emotions and actions are of God, and their opposites are of Lucifer. A political policy is equated with a moral right and opposition to it with diabolical malevolence. See, the problem up in here is people are always viewing things in extremes. To them, it's all black and white, which means that if something ain't of God, then it must be of the devil. So what starts out as political opposites turns into moral opposites. Them crooked right-wingers have made it so that capitalists are all holy, and communists ain't nothing but devil worshipers. But it ain't just political power plays people trying to pawn. Sometimes you just gotta stab a brother in the back, but dress it up like you're doing the world a favor. Long-held hatreds of neighbors can now be openly expressed and vengeance taken, despite the Bible's charitable injunctions. What you know about this play's title, partner? According to Martine, a crucible is a severe test, obviously referring to the raw grind Pachter beasting through. And if you want to keep it mad literal, a crucible also used to melt away all that chanky bullshit on a piece of metal, till all that's left is pure, uncut, top-grade steel. So is the play saying that Proctor is the purity that comes out of all this crooked ass mess? Are we supposed to put it all on the line for our beliefs? Maybe. But truth is, John's death doesn't prove nothing to nobody. You best not forget what Reverend Hale say to Elizabeth in the last act of the play. Cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. It is a mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. Don't be a player hater, get yourself some thug no swag, and tell your mama to subscribe. Peace, players.